Hello fellow translators. So today's video is uh, actually for you guys who might be a bit more advanced. So not just starting out, but you're already in the process of becoming, of earning a living, of making your living from freelance translation. And I want to talk about something that might be of interest for you. It'll definitely be of interest for you, uh, even if you're just starting out, but it might be something that you'll be doing uh, at some point in the near future. And this is to work on retainer. So what does this mean? Um, this is a very interesting concept, which I unfortunately did not do as a freelance translator. I wish I had done more of it, uh, or at least tried to do it a um, some more. I, I have friends who've done it, and I'll get into that a bit more later on. But first of all, what does it mean? Uh, working on retainer, working, sometimes you hear it on forfait, like in, in Europe, very often they, they refer to it as a forfait. But uh, it, what it means is that you get paid a set amount every month, rather than getting paid per job at, you know, whatever, uh, whenever they need something, you get paid for that job and that's it. And so how does that work and how, how is that different? So generally this is the way it works. So you've been working for a client, say you've been, uh, you know, you, pretty regularly, you're doing jobs for them, everything like that. And maybe for over a year now you've been doing jobs for them. So you do a quick calculation and say you see how much you've been earning over this year and it's been more or less steady with you know, jobs here and there all the time. And you get an average of every quarter, uh, quarter would be three months, so at every quarter you're earning, I don't know, $2,150 from them per, per quarter. And um, which, I mean, or, or anyway, let's say, let's say it's that amount, 2150 So you can contact this client and be like, look, I've noticed that since we started work, uh, working together, the workflow is pretty regular, like it goes up and down, but it seems to follow you know, more or less regularly, and I get an average of two thousand one hundred and fifty uh, dollars per quarter. How about this? How about from now on, I will work for you, uh, and I, and you figure out how you know also how many words you've been translating. You know what the volume is. And you say I will do the same volume for two thousand dollars per quarter, rather than two thousand one hundred and fifty, uh, and you know, but. I get paid at the beginning of each quarter and you know I get paid the set amount for each quarter and that covers the quarter and I will do up until that amount um, you know for two thousand dollars rather than two one fifty so first of all why would you ever want to do this you're gonna get paid less for the same amount of work well you do this for several reasons first of all this is guaranteed income which is very good it, it gives you stability when you're starting out or I mean when you're starting out when you're going ahead and even trying to get other new clients and stuff like that and knowing that you have this stability that you can fall back on this set income that you will receive no matter what can make life a lot easier for you um, and well and the client will accept it because it's a lower rate you know that they, they'll be happy to pay less than they would be paying regardless and uh, you know and what you can do then is well and obviously you cap it because what you want to make sure is you say okay the volume that I've been doing is you know X number of words I will translate up to X number of words anything above that it goes back to my normal rate so anything above that, they're, they'll, you know, anything up until that, they're getting that discount because they only pay two thousand instead of two one fifty or whatever it is. But anything above that, it reverts back to your normal rate. And um, and so yeah, and this makes their life easier as well because they feel like with the invoicing and all that, it makes it a lot more regular and they don't have to worry about that and uh, and stuff like that. So it can be, um, it can make both people's life easier. And even though you'll be earning a bit less it actually helps you out because it gives you more stability which allows you a bit more relaxation in that you can use that time to and the energy and effort to try to find other clients as well knowing that you have that cushion can really help later on because you have that 2000 per 3 months that's you know 600 something dollars per month that you know you're going to be getting and so anything else that you get will be above that and um and so yeah there are a couple things to to keep in mind when you do this first of all realize that it's Per volume, you know, put that cap at that volume. Say anything up until this amount, and anything above will revert back to the normal uh, fee. And second of all, you want to uh, specify that, um, you know, if they accept it, then that's the way it'll be. And uh, and say you can, uh, you can terminate this contract at any point, or you can terminate this agreement at any point with a two-week notice or thirty days notice. Because what you want to avoid is that they come to the end of the uh, of the month or of the quarter and they say actually this quarter we didn't have that much for you so don't charge us the full 2000 just charge us 1500 
no, you know, because that, that's not what you agreed to and they're getting the better rate because they agreed to that other thing. What they can do is, is say, and I think it's fair, is they say, okay, actually we think our volume is going to be going way down in the future. So, you know, with one month notice, they can let you know from now on we don't want to do this anymore or something along those lines. Obviously, there, it needs to be a way for them to, uh, to terminate the contract somehow. And I would say, yeah, about one month notice should be fine. Um, anyway, it would, uh, I, and so, yeah, so as long as you can make sure that you have those safeguards in place and, uh, you know, so the volume and, and the fact that they can't terminate it after the fact, you know, they have to give you some advance notice, then it can be a pretty good deal for both parties involved. Now, what can be really great is, in fact, what happened to my friend, she was working on retainer for a client who kind of forgot about her. And so what happened was she was, uh, you know, they hadn't contacted her for a job in a while, but the accounting department still kept paying her. So she kept receiving money and not doing any work for them. And uh, this, I mean, this is a while back. I don't know. Now it's probably, I mean, they probably figured out or something's changed. But I know for a while she kept getting paid for not doing any work, which, you know, would be fun. I wouldn't count on that happening. That probably won't happen. Maybe it happens with bigger companies that have separate accounting departments and they're not in touch or something. So usually that won't happen. But it still makes life a lot easier. It also, another good thing is that they already... This makes you almost like a regular translator for them. So you know that they'll be using you. If, if you're one of the many translators they work with and they have that deal with you, they're a lot more likely to use you. And they'll go to you first because they know they have that set amount that they have to pay you anyway. So they're going to use you for those. So um, anyway, it, it, uh, it can work out well for anyone. And uh, But again, it should be for someone who has been already working with a client for some time. They have some regularities and that's why they can show on average per quarter or per month or per whatever it is you want to do, whatever you feel more comfortable. Um, but yeah, working on retainer can be very interesting and can really help you going ahead. Like I said, when I was a, trans, a freelance translator, because now I'm doing more on the agency stuff, which is a bit different. But there, you know, they also have the same concept. But I, I wish I'd tried something like this uh, more when I was a freelancer uh, because I think it would um, it would have helped a lot. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's very interesting. And so feel free to look into it. Please let me know if you do look into it. If you've tried something similar along those lines, I'd really be curious about hearing uh, stories about working on retainer. But otherwise, yeah, it's something to keep in your arsenal. And once you have some regular clients that you've been working with for a while, it might be worth approaching them. You know, as long as you do it politely and you do it in a way, say, hey, this could be a benefit to both of us. You know, worst case scenario, they'll be like, no, we're more comfortable working the old way. Fine, no problem. You know, and leave them that possibility, obviously. Um, but, uh, but it could be something interesting for both parties involved. So hopefully you find this useful and you're able to use it at some point in the future. Uh, don't forget to click thumbs up if you find this useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Don't forget to tell your friends to subscribe. Don't forget to tell your enemies to subscribe. And uh, don't, uh, don't forget to check out the next video when it comes up. I'll see you, I'll see you then. Okay, bye. Thanks. Sabedum. <laughs>